to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and today we have a fantastic announcement for the Complexity Made Simple channel because today I can announce that we are releasing our first online world-class problem-solving course in a series that we're going to be releasing over the next 12 months. 25 years ago, I went on a course to learn all about Six Sigma, process thinking and process physics. It was a course that transformed my life, transformed my skill as an engineer, and just gave me the ability to walk into anybody's workspace, understand their process, understand their problem, and help me to fix it for them regardless of any previous process knowledge that is a skill that i want you to have the first course we are releasing is the seven quality tools course over 28 videos nearly five hours worth of video content along with some great text that you can go to now and start your journey to becoming a world class problem solver. The link is in the description below. If you want to become a world class technical problem solver, start your journey today and click on the link right now. Welcome to the latest video and in this video newsletter well, what we're going to take a look at is an email from somebody about a measurement system analysis that seems to have gone wrong. So we're going to take a look at, it's an MSA. The technique is gauge R and R, so it is for variables. That's what we're going to look at. And essentially, you could say, well, someone's asked for help. So EMAD, this is specifically for you, but we're going to learn something about your about your MSA uh, for everyone else who's who's watching as well. So, someone sent me an email, and what they've said is, "Look, help! Um, I've got repeatability. I've done an MSA, and the variation coming from repeatability." is 98%. Now people when they do MSAs, I think they believe they're not going to see bad results. So people don't understand that the measurement system that they have has error in it, even though it's calibrated and it could have a huge amount of error in it compared to what you're actually measuring. So in this case, we've got 98%. And Emad said, Flipping egg. I don't understand. Please help me. Now, before we look at the results, I want to just talk about where these numbers come from. So when it says 98%, I want to talk about where these numbers come from so that when we look at the data that I've been sent, we'll understand the potential problems in the MSA or the potential problems with the measurement system, because this could be a genuine this could be a genuine result. Now look, what this number is, the error from your measurement system is a ratio. And that's important to understand. So what is the ratio? Well, look, you've got variability that is coming from the parts, the natural variability of the process. And then what you do in an MSA, you set the test up in such a way that it evaluates the variability coming from the measurement system. And then it simply ratios that to that. So in this case, how big is that? One, two... Let's call it five to keep it simple. If we were doing an MSA here and we got that amount of variability from the measurement system with that amount of error coming from the manufacturing system, what you would see is 
a contribution of about 20%. It's a, it's a ratio. So because because it's a ratio, you can change the ratio by affecting the MSA, if you like, in two ways. I could make the variability bigger here, maybe by introducing more people into the, the MSA, perhaps. Or I could artificially change this. So sometimes people and sometimes people do this in two ways. Sometimes what they do is they artificially make this bigger by the way they select samples. So the way you select samples is really important, especially in the in the gauge R and R. Well, for both actually, but there's a particular thing you should do here when you select samples. So you could artificially make this look bigger if you select the samples in the wrong way, but you could also do something else. You could artificially make this result look smaller. And therefore what you do is, is you make your measurement system look much worse. Okay, so it's a ratio. What's the variability we're seeing from the manufacturing system? What's the variability that we're seeing coming from the measurement system? Now, in order to sample the parts correctly, what you must do, do is make a bucket of parts out of your manufacturing process. Simply walk up to that bucket, just randomly mix them all around. And I would say take 10. Take 10 randomly out of your manufacturing process. In other words, your manufacturing process creates variability that looks like that. If you randomly take 10, the likelihood is that you will take 10 that represents that and you won't have artificially made it big or artificially made it small. So that's the first thing to say. It's a ratio of what your manufacturing process is doing compared to what your measurement system is doing. Now, because it's a ratio, sometimes people have a problem who make very, very accurate components because this then is very small and it makes their measurement system error look so much bigger. So for instance, at this point, we have a measurement error of 20%, which would be, which would kind of be okay. But let's say we buy a new machine. And when we buy the new machine, the variability in our parts now is immediately half what it was before. Because that's what the new machine's doing. You would immediately double your ratio of measurement error and suddenly your measurement system starts to look bad. The measurement system hasn't changed. The measurement system hasn't deteriorated but the ratio has changed because the process that you were using has got better. Okay, so there's some principles that are going on in the maths. Now what we can do is take a look at EMAD's data set. So let's take a look. Okay, well the first thing to notice, of course, is there's the, um, there's the result that he's not happy with. So there's the there's the 98% that he's not happy with. And he's saying, well, where is my problem? Now that data, that result has come from the data set that we've got on the right hand side here. And you can see that we've got a number of parts. We've got different operators. It looks like they're only using four components. Now that in and of itself is an issue. But if you look at the four components, so I'll just identify some results here. Just a group there. The result is all identical. So this is almost like every component is identical. So when you get a different result, like the 0.99 that we've got here and the 0.99 that you've got there, the only place that that could have come from is measurement error. And therefore, 100% of what you're seeing is measurement error. 
And if you look at Imad's results, he's got 98% coming from repeatability. He's got the other 2% coming from reproducibility. In other words, 100% of all the variability he's seeing is coming from the measurement system. Okay, so there's two problems potentially going on here. So let's talk about the solution. But what we've effectively got is there is no variability here in the parts. So when you get variability there, what does the MSA do? It says, well, all the difference I can see came from the measurement system. That's because by the look of it, every part, all four of those parts are identical. That's a mistake potentially in the sample selection. So the first thing to say is I would have taken 10, not four. So that's point number one. That's not why the numbers look the way they do, but take, please take 10, don't take four. So there is no variability here. And so, of course, yes, everything you see is coming from the measurement system. So the, the actual maths is working perfectly correctly. The, the result is absolutely spot on. So what are the two potential problems that EMAD could, have, could be suffering from? The first one is that he sort of pre-selected the samples. So most of those results, you know, for part one, two, three, four, seem to be landing at one. Now, there, he's, he's not actually put a decimal place on there, but when he gets a different number to one, what we're seeing is 0.99. So I'm going to assume that his measurement system is, is measuring in hundredths like this. Now, if one is the target and you've pre-selected the samples so they all hit there and you've got no other variability because you've filtered out the rest of the variability, that's where the problem is. Okay, so if you properly select 10 parts selected randomly out of the process, I would expect your problem to go away. So that could be solution one. You didn't select the parts correctly. You pre-selected them. In other words, you filtered them. You mustn't do that. The other problem you might have is not enough decimals. Not enough decimals on the gauge. Now he sent me the data. Now when he gets one, I don't actually get any decimals at all. I just get this. But when he goes away from one, he gives me 0.99. So I'm going to assume that, that this is measuring in hundredths. But maybe, maybe these ones on ones. Maybe there's an extra decimal place on here. Maybe it really looks like that. Now, you may have rounded up, by the way. So if you've rounded these numbers up, that would be a mistake. You need to leave all the decimal places in place. That's really important to do. But if the decimal places don't actually uh, exist, in other words, what you have is a highly accurate uh, a highly accurate manufacturing process you know and these days i deal with a lot of people who are measuring to microns they have tolerances plus or minus two microns you know they are measuring really really tightly they are manufacturing really tr tightly so genuinely they have very little variability in the parts and therefore all the variability shows up in the measurement system so 
if if that is the case you have to make sure you have plenty of decimals on your measurement system now i have to say if you are measuring microns you would actually want another decimal place you want to be measuring uh, you know another place again you should always have 10 times more decimal than the tolerance. So if you're measuring in microns, your measurement system should be 10 times better than that. You should be measuring tenths of a micron. You have that extra decimal place that helps you to see the variability in the components and not variability in the measurement system. So Imad, the number you're getting is correct. That's the first thing, because there is no variability in the parts that you've shown to the measurement system. They are all coming out to be one, and therefore the maths is correct. 100% of all the variability it sees is the measurement system. You may have pre-selected the samples, go back and correct that, or you might not have enough decimals on your measurement system. Maybe once you've watched the video and you've gone back and taken a look at what you've done, you can send me a message. Uh, I'm more than happy to help you out. That goes for anybody else, by the way. If you have an issue with MSA, a designed experiment, any kind of statistics at all that you're using in quality performance in your plant, and you need a bit of help, please do send me a message. I'm more than happy to make a video for you, or sometimes I'll just send a simple, a simple email. Imad, hopefully that's helpful, and I hope to hear from you soon.